And now, Freelance Heroism presents Return to Ravenloft. Hey everybody, welcome to Freelance Heroism. My name is Dees. And I'm Rachel. And before I even get started, I just want to say thank you to everyone out there who donates at the Patreon, in particular those who donate at the producer tier. Mm -hmm. Rachel, would you like to let us know who they are? I would love to. We want to say thank you to Duncan, Crispy, Nate, Breakmeister, and Rebecca. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much. We couldn't do it without you. You help us make a better show for everyone. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you. Rachel. Dees. I am very curious about this particular topic. I want to <laughs> talk about what it's like being a nerd girl. Because oh. <laughs> <laughs> you're clearly a nerd. I, um, am I? Would you well yeah but because like game stores mm -hmm. and women are they generally don't mix and for not the most positive of reasons right yeah, yeah. like a lot of guys in our scene are mm -hmm. kind of creepy you yes. know yeah i not me i'm a fucking delight <laughs> but most people mm -hmm. not my, i want to say most i'll say there's a handful that really they oversample. You know yes. what I mean? Yeah. It feels like there's more of them than there are. Yeah. And um, I know that like some some people will try to put forward the argument of like, oh, there's just not a lot of nerd girls. But that's that's why that's not true. It's just that they but, don't go in certain spaces because of the creepy because yeah. they get creeped on. Yeah. So I like when you say creeped on. That's a good <laughs> that's a good term. So hold on can you can you you have experienced this yes yeah right maybe you could uh regale us front with some tales <laughs> from the front line um i know that uh one time uh when i first started uh going to the kind of local nerd game store here local um, nerd game store yeah <laughs> that's a good that's a good modifier uh i was buying it was like a D and D book or a Pathfinder book or something like that, and the cashier, as he's ringing up my book that I have come into the store on my own, browsed and then purchased, right. he just sort of casually asks me, "Oh, is this for your boyfriend? Do you guys game together?" That's a that's a <laughs> probing question. <laughs> like, not oh, do you play Pathfinder, yeah. or you know, is this is this a gift for someone? just is this is this for your boyfriend do you have a boyfriend are you gaming with your boyfriend <laughs> are you sexually active multiple times a week <laughs> so i've had this that is a weird it's a weird question it's yeah, yeah. um just ring it up fucking <laughs> dickwad uh another time um also at the same store unfortunately i was just browsing it was after i had run a pathfinder game like at the store i was the dm right after the game i stayed for a few minutes because i wanted to check out the minis mm -hmm. and i noticed very quickly because it's a small store that s some other customer in the store was following me up and down the aisles oh. like i would go down an aisle and then he would go down the same aisle and then i went back to like the first aisle that that I had noticed him following me, and he also went down that aisle, and um, I quickly left after that because that was it was not cool. Yeah, um, it's weird. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's weird. I don't even like. This is gonna sound completely antisocial, but I don't like being on the same aisle with other people <laughs> in anything. Like if I'm at a like a like Barnes and Noble or something like that, and I'm looking at like mm -hmm. some books. Yeah. And a person like comes down the aisle, mm -hmm. I will literally stop what I'm doing and leave. I don't want to just, I don't like that cone of visualization that like uh -huh. direct ang just get away from it. Right. <laughs> yeah. Like everyone was like, the pandemic was, it was such a struggle being by yourself. And I'm like, no, I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I never want to see other people ever again. I, I don't, I don't mind if somebody else is browsing in the same aisle, but I don't like to be crowded. Um, yeah. You know, I want I want some space. But this guy Rachel, Rachel gets aggressive if you get too close to her. She's like, You're too close, man. She's like choke him out. No. But the, but this guy was like legitimately just following. Like I was browsing. He was just following me up and have, down. Have the you aisles. ever have you ever had a guy come up and like 
because this is where I originally started. I started thinking about people that use pickup lines mm -hmm. and how lame that has to be. <laughs> like, there's no way you can tell one authentically. You have to say it and then be like, Phew. right? That was so bad. <laughs> right? Like, yeah. Have you ever had anyone do something like that? Like a more like they just come up to you and say something like, I don't, I don't really think so. Cause I mean, I'm also like, I don't, I don't ever go to bars or anything like that, which yeah. I assume is where you would hear lines like that most often. I go to, when I used to go to bars, it was to drink. It was mm -hmm. not to meet women. Uh -huh. I literally, if there was no one there, it'd been better. <laughs> it'd been better. Just empty Just bars. You the best. by yourself in a bar. Oh my God. Yeah. Cause then I don't ever have to flag down the person for a drink. I'm here for business. Right. I'm medicated. <laughs> I'm not you, here are, to, you are working. Yeah, I'm not here to fucking make friends. I'm here to win. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why I don't drink anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you never had that? No, I've never really had pickup lines like that. I've had stuff like... um, Just like guys being overly eager to help me with something that I have not requested help with right um like one time when i was in i think like high school i went uh like skating with one of my friends and the skate place also had pool tables and mm -hmm. so she and i were playing pool very poorly because we're both like high school girls who have never really played pool before you're a but much better pool player now but we're just <laughs> but we're just having fun and then this guy skates over and he, like, leans up to me and he's like, hey, let me make this shot for you. A lot of uh, a lot of things here. Okay, first <laughs> off, anytime a guy skates over to you, it's probably not going to go well for them. I just, I don't know. I don't know why I just had that wave of that feeling. I was like, Ooh, bad intro. Bad intro. Like, no. You never want to glide in. <laughs> hey, my name is such and such. Are you guys playing pool? I love pool. It's like nothing. He just... Immediately skates over. He's like, let me make this shot for you. Like, okay. Um, so I was like, okay. And he, uh, and I let him and he missed. And then right. he skated away. You have to. <laughs> and did he just skate away backwards? No. That's the only way to do it. Uh, there was a thing on, on Facebook the other day. I was <laughs> just kind of, I saw this post and it goes, <laughs> Would you rather use Heelys, those wheels, shoes, to roll into a bedroom before sex or <laughs> roll out of a bedroom after? <laughs> right? So this is kind of a weird joke <laughs> or a weird thought, right? Uh -huh. But I had I was just thinking about it and I was like, it has to be a way, right? Mm -hmm. Because if you <laughs> roll in, you're not getting laid. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, once you afterwards you roll out, that's a little, that's kind of cool. It's like a confidence move, right? Right, yeah. like hey, and you like give them the double thumbs as you go out through the door. <laughs> <laughs> but if you rolled in, uh -huh. I'd be like, you gotta go, buddy. Like <laughs> you gotta get the fuck out of here. Like, is... No, don't don't even take those heelys off. Just leave them turn, on. Just turn around and leave. Oh, that's my that's my kink. I like people who wear. <laughs> Heelys. <laughs> How'd you know? Oh my god. Oh, uh, Just the thought of a person rolling in is very funny. Like, <laughs> okay, let's do this. <laughs> uh, what about those um those light up shoes? Like when you step and they they light up. Oh yeah. When I was younger, uh a lot of people in like I was much younger. I don't want to. It wasn't like when I was 16 or something. Mm -hmm. It was when I was like eight or nine. Uh -huh. Everyone in our neighborhood wanted those light up shoes. They'd like, I guess, just come out and like yeah. every different shoe brand had the little light up heels or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking, these are awesome. Yeah. Right. And then I got a pair and I was like, these are terrible. Right. <laughs> because we used to, we used to play uh, like hide and seek and stuff like that. And like, Oh, you play out at night at the at like at the like monkey bars and the sliding board and everything like that. Mm -hmm. You go out there and it's just like giving away your position, like you yeah. can't move. So I just I don't know. I don't I don't like I don't like anything that indicates my location if I don't have to. Right, right. Yeah, those are early rogue feelings. Ah, <laughs> oh. 
Man, I don't know. I I was thinking um I was thinking about that, about mm-hmm. the pickup line thing. And I was just wondering what's the greatest success ever had from a pickup line? It can't be great. Right? It feels like you're doing yourself a disservice. Like you come here often. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? What is I... that? What's your sign? It's like <laughs> get fucked is my sign. Yeah, I don't really I can't really think of the time I've gotten a, a question like that, but I think that's probably just because like if yeah. I am out somewhere, I'm like I'm not a, I'm not at the bar, I'm not at the club. I'm like at the the game store, I'm at Barnes and Noble, you know, I'm at the grocery store. That's that's where <laughs> I go. Those are my three places I go. What a fucking <laughs> dork. What a dork. So there used to um this thing I've I've found better than pickup lines, right? Is uh-huh. you it's like fishing, right? Okay. You use uh, a napkin and you just draw on a napkin. Oh. Right? At a bar, you just get a drink, you sit down and you draw on a napkin. Mm-hmm. Every woman for fifty miles will come look. <laughs> it's un- they it's like the curiosity. Uh-huh. They can't handle it. Right. And you just just don't pay any attention to anybody ever. <laughs> just like totally phase them out and just focus on your drawing. Answer right. without looking. It's so mysterious. Get 30, 30 phone numbers a night. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I don't know. Like, I, it seems weird to me. I, I hear all these kind of like corny pickup lines and I'm like, people made these as a joke, right? Because they're corny. They're terrible. Yeah. If I could remake the alphabet. I put you and I together. <laughs> Ugh. Are those astronaut pants? Because I could see. Or do you have a mirror in your pocket? Because I can see myself in your pants. Are those astronaut pants? Because your ass is out of this world. I also like. There's Blah. no way that you can tell any of those in any sort of seriousness because all of those lame pickup lines are so well known. Yeah. That it's like this. Like you've given zero effort into. Yeah like introducing yourself to this person you know what if i ever got really wealthy i would like hire somebody like john ham seems like a handsome man right you know mm-hmm. john ham mm-hmm. yeah from uh, mad men yeah i think if i got john ham and we just ran an experiment right got mm-hmm. him to go into bars and to like try to pick up women using corny lines i think <laughs> they might still work but not for the reason not because they're smooth uh-huh. because it would be hysterical <laughs> you know what I mean? Someone's like, oh my god, that guy looks like John Ham. He's coming over. John- <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh my god. I'm trying to think of a good pickup line for John Ham. <laughs> How much does an elephant weigh? It's enough to break the ice. Hi, I'm John Ham. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> this is a good time. Uh huh. I just if you're if you're uh, out there trying to pick up people with pickup lines, don't do that. Just learn how to draw service to be well. You'll do all right. <laughs> You'll do all right. Also, if you're like a nerd guy and you see a nerd girl, don't don't be creepy. Yeah. Just don't don't be creepy. Yeah, I just there's that's a, a thing that like I had uh, an ex girlfriend that would come to the game store. Mm-hmm. Uh, after she got out of class, because I used to do playtesting in the afternoons, right? Uh-huh. So I'd, I'd go there and it'd be me and a bunch of other people. We'd be practicing for FNMs or stuff on this magic together. Mm-hmm. And um, so right before like Pro Tour season, people are in the game store all the time right. playing nonstop. And it is a pungent scent <laughs> in the in the room uh-huh. uh, from the types of, of nerds that you know who I'm talking about. Yeah. Um. So you, I'm playing in there and then she would come in and the entire room like would literally stop making noise. Oh, no. When when a girl would walk in and I'm like, Jesus fucking Christ, you had never seen a woman before, <laughs> like in your whole life. <laughs> like it got quiet, like Michael Jackson moonwalked in like <laughs> it was fucking weird. Right. And she was yeah. like, that was super, super creepy. Like we went out to eat and she was like, that was super creepy. And I'm like, yeah, you you should probably just call me when you get there and I'll come out. But I'm like, uh-huh. so you don't have to feel uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I'm like, it's just, it, they're always like that. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I was at dragon con one year and I went to the card room to do a few booster drafts. And while mm-hmm. I was, by the way, in the basement of a hotel, no uh-huh. bullshit. <laughs> so 
again, same scent, same <laughs> general vibe in there. Super loud, right? Mm -hmm. Card card rooms are loud. And um, uh, a couple uh, cosplay girls walk in. The mm -hmm. whole room is like, you could hear a pin drop. Oh, no. <laughs> and I was just like, guys, what the fuck is going on? Like, somebody talk. Like, they were in there for maybe 45 seconds, turned around and left. And I was uh -huh. like, no, I totally get it. Yeah. Because they could hear it, the room, from when they descended into the fucking creepy murder basement that was the card place. Mm -hmm. And they were there for seconds, not even a full minute. And they were just like, nope, it got weird when we walked in. Let's leave. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, I totally understand. I totally understand that vibe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's. Yeah. <sighs> yeah th there's, I mean, there's definitely been times where I've been at game stores and just the vibe just feels weird and i just yeah. feel like i'm being stared at or i'm being followed or yeah guys <laughs> don't do that shit right yeah if you're a person that does that shit and you're listening to this show then fucking quit listening to this show we don't want you here mm -hmm. be fucking normal yeah just be a fucking normal person yeah jesus <laughs> not even religious <laughs> <laughs> Well, do you want to uh, go to this week's episode? No, I kind of want to yell at these dicks a little bit more. <laughs> but yeah, let's do it. Let's go to the episode. Okay. So this is Return to Ravenloft, Season 2, Episode 23, Quack in the Saddle. Quack in the Saddle? Like the ACDC? Or is it... Uh, oh, no, it was... Uh, what's it called? That would be Quack in Black. So oh, yeah. Quack in the Saddle is Aerosmith. Yes. Yeah. Sure. Okay. <laughs> I'm quack, <laughs> quack in the saddle again. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Right on. Let's go to the episode. All right. My thinking is, we go down there, we offer them a choice that we can cure what just happened to them and make it so they don't get ripped apart, sent to one of the worst realms ever of torture and misery and all they have to do is leave I've heard worse plans I'd say go for it or you know we could kill all of them which would require us to go into the room anyway true right? Yeah, and to, so, and to make to make cleanup easier, I will I will let you know there are four uh, open graves down there. So, you know, maybe six of one, half a dozen of the other. By the time we're all said and done, <laughs> so how about you guys get prepared? I'll walk in with my hands up, uh -huh. so that there's no threatening. Sure, and I'll try to talk them out of it. And if things go sideways, mm -hmm. I'll say. Um, what's a good code word? Beeswax. <laughs> I'll say beeswax. I'll work beeswax into the conversation. And then you just come down there and, and, uh, we can get started. Like, like we're going to have to, if they don't accept. Gotcha. I was hoping for rhino butthole. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was, was hoping... I... I was hoping for crackers as a callback to Dragon Knights. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I was certain I was going to fuck that up. I was just uh, a little out of it at the time and I was just certain <laughs> I was going to fuck that up. <laughs> All right, we ready? Ready. Yeah. I'm crack my knuckles. I'm going to like take my fingers and put it on the corner of my face. Like kind of like do the twist like the smile. <sighs> All right. Hands up, and I'm going to walk down. Excuse me? Gentlemen. They all look up. I don't want any trouble. I uh, am pretty certain you experienced the thing, right? First time? They're, 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 try they're looking at each other. Um, trying to look gauge you, gauge everything. Any other day, we could have a lot of disagreements and we can handle it like we handle things. But today, I'm going to ask you guys very carefully to listen to what I have to say. 
because it involves all of us. We can fight tomorrow. Well, if the, if things go well, we can fight tomorrow. If things go poorly, we're not going to be doing much fighting, I would imagine. Give me a persuasion. Uh, I'll roll it. Oh. Uh, I'm going to take 10 on it. Oh, wait. No, I'm not. <laughs> uh, 27. Sorry, I got the rolls backwards. All right. They they all they nod and one of them steps forward. I saw a woman and children that reacted to me like a wife and kids, and I don't have any. It's gonna be pretty complicated, so I want you guys to try to buckle in, all right? So if we could it it'd make it'd go a long way for me to not um I could explain it better if I didn't feel like we were about to kick off. Is that all right? Just give me a minute and I can explain everything. Fair? Fair. Fair. All right, I'm going to put my hands down. This might come as a shock to you, but there isn't just one universe. There are multiple. Multiple worlds that are very similar to the one that we exist on right here. I know this is a big thought. What you saw was a shattering of one of those universes. And you got some bleed over, some crossover from the others to yours. So a decision that you might make tomorrow might send your life in a different direction depending on how you make it. Like this right now, the decision you're making will change based on how you react to what I'm telling you. Everyone with me so far? They're talking it over. Rachel's tearing up that rhino. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> so, three of them are, they're not, you can tell they're not getting it, but the other two are like, no, nah, hold your blades. Just listen to the man for a moment. Now, I want you to to work with me here. I have the same thing happen to me, and I've interacted with this type of thing multiple times. I am maybe currently the foremost expert in this entire area on this phenomenon. Technically, there's one, one more kind of that knows it, but they don't know it right now, but maybe later they'll know it. We're getting sidetracked. I need to get in that room. I know what you're going to say. You want to stop me from doing that. I would highly recommend that you not. Because if I don't stop what's happening, there's a very real likelihood that we could be torn apart. Not, not, like a piece of you like your arm but the essence of your soul and what makes you you would be scattered never to be reassembled on any plane it would be the most agonizing pain followed by absolute nothingness and oblivion never to be reconsoled or reconstructed it would be bad, yeah. really, really bad. Give me one more persuasion. Twenty-five. All right. The voice from the far side, the beholder. I'd listen to him. He's got a lot of eyes. He sees what's happening. <laughs> mm hmm. Except I know of you. They don't. I'm going to kind of glance at him. Kavir, Master Professional. Nice to meet you. I'm going to kind of hold my Cargillahis. hand up. Cargillahis. He kind of like rocked. Cargillahis. Cargillahis. 
he not though you kind of see the beholder kind of just all his eye stalks gonna do a slight bow the 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 five outside they're like oh shit it talks oh yeah they're they're very intelligent i i I'd, I'd let you in but we're not the ones holding the door he can get the door down i just need you guys to not be here right now it causes tension when too many people that have had the vision are too close together okay okay um it adds undue stress on this particular point we need you to separate as far as possible so you want us to leave i want to just not be evaporated that's pretty much my goal here so we're already in a really bad spot with so many people in this particular region having seen what we just saw. It's a lot of pressure here. I need you to all just go in different directions until I can get this under control. Come back here tomorrow and we can hammer this out like, like real gangsters, however you want to do. But right now... I just need a little time to put the universe back together. He knows who I am. He can vouch for me. They all look around and they're like, yeah, we ain't paid enough to stick around for the universe destroyed. Let's get the I fuck out of here. I don't think there is a paycheck big enough for that, but I, you know, I'm willing to, to, to offset <laughs> whatever price or cost it will be. Yeah. Fucking. I told him not to attack a place with a fucking death stone in it. They said, not, oh, the death stone's not going to fuck. And they all start running out talking shit. As they're like, man, god damn it. Last time we listened to Trache, this is bullshit. I just kind of look at him as they walk by and I'm like... Uh, well, they're, they're heading for the stairs that actually lead outside. Oh, they're not coming up the stairs. Okay. <laughs> no, they're, 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 they're bolting. Okay. Well... In that case, fuck him. I'm going to take my hands from up and put them on my hip and just like, oh. <laughs> oh. The, be the beholder's laughing. <laughs> that could have gone poorly. That was half true. Yeah. It's the important half anyway. Cargillis? Yeah, Cargillis, yes. It's nice to meet you. What are you in you for? Too. <laughs> the people of this place. They raided my, my shop and they raided my tower and took me hostage to learn my secrets. I'm going to call some friends down. Is that all right? I don't want there to be any tension here. So don't be off put by what, them. And what side are you on? Huh? What side are you guys on? What I side? know you're not on the Institute. No. And I know you don't work for the people that own the Institute. Who would that be? Well, we can get for... to that. We can get to that. Um, My friends are going to come down. I promise they're not going to hurt you. You're not going to hurt them. We're all going to be a big, happy pod. He oh, nods. As Adri or hey. Kestrel clinks down the stairs with her sword drawn. <laughs> Mumbling murder, 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 murder. Yes, <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm nothing, gonna. Gesture, nothing to worry about there. I'm gonna gesture as they come down the stairs. He's cool. We're just talking. Fair enough. I'm looking right at Kess. <laughs> <laughs> Kess has her sword and shield out. Uh, she's kind of holding her sword, so like the blades like resting on her her shoulder. Um. She like sees the beholder and she's just looking at it as she comes down the stairs. Eye to eye to eye to eye to mm -hmm. eye to eye. Wait, That's... if you're the professional, mm -hmm. you're the one who killed Strahd. Correct. Which makes interesting. Hmm. Interesting. He said you'd come. Who said? A young necromancer. Victor. That's my student. Yeah. 
He said you'd make it. He mentioned my best shot of freedom was to play nice and behave with you, and you may let me out. That seems wise. He couldn't let me out, he said. He had, his mission was too, it was too much what he was doing. But he said someone would come. And here we are. I would like to incite the beholder. Go for it. Oh, I love sight and beholders. 33. He's being honest. As far as you know. We need to get in that room. I suppose you know that. He nods. You guys hear a voice from the other side of the wall? Cass? You recognize Fivin's voice. <laughs> um, I'll look in the direction of the voice. You, you see on the other side of the magic shield, it's Fivin holding it up. He's holding... <laughs> oh. He's holding up the energy shield. Oh, look. Hey, princess. I knew I smelled you. Hey, princess, we came to save you. <laughs> It took you long enough. <laughs> In all fairness, it really didn't. It was pretty pretty decisively quick from there to I, here. It's true. <laughs> what are you doing in there? Not letting the crooks get in. There was already one robbery I found out today. I wasn't going to let them steal the rest of them. Wait, 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 wait. You mean there's nobody else in there with you? No. I well, got to the what vault the hell first. were those morons doing out here waiting? Mist appears in the room and a figure steps out of it. You recognize your uncle and he's gagging on gas. Oh. And he backs up. <laughs> God, <laughs> fucking skeleton. Fucking gas. Fucking. <laughs> well, this Looks didn't up. turn out exactly the way I'd expected. Rain, your ship? Uh, in, a, in a manner of speaking, yes. Not in any manner of speaking. What are you <laughs> talking about? Fly Who the hell thing. gasses their own ship? Someone with a really cunning plan. That's who. Wait, you were on my ship? His ship? That <laughs> the ship? ship? It's my ship, just to clarify, because we're having a little confusion here about this. It's mine. I own it. I built it. It looked pretty. I wanted to steal it. Yeah, I wasn't getting in the you. vault. Yeah, dumbass skeleton and ghost flipped some fucking switch and gassed the entire damn ship. Nice security <laughs> system, by the way. There. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't do that, but I'll take credit for it. <laughs> <laughs> like he's, you can see his eyes. There's a slight blood trail coming from one of his eyes. Yeah. So what lesson did we learn? Oh. Ah. Oh. Don't jump on ships. Oh, well. Oh. I was going to say don't take things that aren't yours by force, but close enough. Uh pirate? He's pointing at you. That's a, that's a good point. Is you there? I, <laughs> privateer, okay? Businessman. Let's make sure we've got that organized straight. crime. Oh God, organized! I saw what you, you know, what you call an organization nowadays. Uh, by the way, most of them are dead. By the way, sorry. Yeah, I got to say, this isn't really very organized. Not, I work not, with a lot of people, and I, even I do all. a better job than this. I would have done better. Yeah. Yeah. I... I'll call three of you. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so speaking of disorganization, what the. Fuck are you doing? There's a book here uh -huh. that will decipher the goddamn voice in the head that keeps talking. So it never crossed your mind maybe to just, I don't know, seek somebody out and ask them for help as opposed to trying to kill half a damn student body and wreck the place? If I, I told mean... the fraternity of shadows... I was here for a book about a prophecy to take over this realm. 
Well, they okay. keep it for themselves. There are more subtle ways to get this done, but that's neither here nor there. Okay. At times rush. There's Materia Bay is under a complete fucking siege. Fucking, there's a lich on the other side of the fucking map that's destroying a goddamn city. Yeah. A dragon's gone off, yeah. if you guys haven't heard. And obviously, I guess there's two shadow dragons flying around the damn map or flying around the damn land. That's what Ooh. I heard. Yeah. There's a Death Knight roaming. Yeah, everybody's yeah, trying to make the on. same. Everybody's trying to make the same play right now, effectively for the prize, as it were. Okay, fine. You need the book to decipher the voice in your head. I would be remiss to say I would like to very much know what's going on too, but I don't know that I necessarily then want to follow the this, same path. He points to the shield. This kid or whoever he is on the other side yeah. says the book's been stolen. The one and there's a fake. I think all three of us turn our head to Fivin all at once. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Fivin. He's like, I told you there was another robbery and I don't know when. The first part of the book's legit, but after that, it's just scribbles. It wasn't the same book I took out of the cavern. I don't know who swapped it out. No wonder no one's been able to translate the damn thing. It's scribbles. Let me see the fake. I'm not older than the shield with him in here. There's other things in here he might take. I don't know. You handle him. I, look, I, I just look and I'm like, do you want to get gassed again? He coughs up another load of blood in his hand. That's what I thought. Sit down over there and put your hands underneath your ass and just stay. You see, as he walks, he, his steps off. Like, whatever hit him royally fucked him. Hmm. What color was the gas? Yellow. Hmm. Is there a way to look out of a window or something like that up at the boat? You can run up the stairs and um, that lead to the outside to that locked door, or it's open now, but you can head out and you can see from there. Okay. Yeah, I'll do that real quick. Okay. Be right back. Okay. I don't want any trouble while I'm gone, and I'm pointing at uh, I guess. So just take it easy, okay? I'm very easygoing. That is not true. <laughs> All right, I'm a dash, cunning action, dash upstairs. Take a little look. All right. You see a kobold hanging by a chain on the bottom of the ship, firing off fireballs <laughs> at the mist guys. <laughs> and there's a gas kind of pouring off the sides from different portholes. Okay, so it's by design. It's not a... Okay. I heard... Poison gas, my initial instinct is to think of me. My second mm -hmm. is with the color yellow to think of someone else. <laughs> so I know. cover my bases here. Okay. All right. I'm back in. I think we're okay. Yeah. Okay. The beholder. I believe she's very peaceful. Um, just just one second. Sorry, D walk, the chemist in me will not shut up now uh, all right the gas that's pouring out of the ship is poisonous right mm -hmm. so it's a class six um is it a class three material by any chance oh no <laughs> you're wondering um. if it'll explode <laughs> well you got a kobold at the end of a string hurricane <laughs> fireballs in oh, a it will not explode if it's, okay. a po if it's a poison i use it wouldn't be just making sure because no, no, there, i appreciate there are, that there are plenty of there are plenty of <laughs> yes. materials that are both class three and class six and to I clarify just... i've never heard class six or class three uh -huh. I've, i don't know either you, of those but when you were wrong. asking the question context clues led me to believe i mm -hmm. knew what class three meant yes <laughs> Class 6 is a toxic hazardous material according to the Department of Transportation. Class 3 is a flammable material. So Class 6 is what they call the fucking liquor store on, <laughs> on, on military bases. <laughs> Swear that's, to God. That's, this is a no, nope, very, that makes sense. This is that a very made, educational that... episode of Freelance Heroes tonight. Uh, the tonight you a very know... educational episode of Freelance Heroes. <laughs> oh, they beat me to it. Yeah. They beat me to it. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so okay, so so um, Hawks is not going to blow the ship up. That's no, that's okay. out of game. That's that's Nathan. That's yeah. not Rain. Oh I'm no, just, it's all good. I was just thinking. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs>
by the way, we we would end the game early if that's what happened. <laughs> if I got the boat back to flight here, get off of it and watch it explode above me, I'd be very pissed off. Mm-hmm. <sighs> I wouldn't do that to you. You think so? Yeah, I thought All right. about it. I'm going to walk over to the now seated pirate. Is that correct? He's now sitting. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, I've still got my sword out. Um, standing maybe a good like seven to ten feet from him. Um, just sort of like kind of guarding, but also like if he suddenly stands up or does something, I am going to stab him um, because I want to make Fivin feel like he can lower the shield to show Kavir the book. All right. Then just he's kind of trying to look through the shield and he lowers the shield. He drops to his knees, panting. Makes his way back up and he picks up the book off the pedestal and walks over to you and hands it to you. All right. So, Fivin, did uh, you have that little mind scramble thing happen to you too? Uh huh. Wow. I want to look at the beholder after he asked that question and kind of give him like a raised eyebrow and see if he nods yes or no. He nods. Okay. Just being subtle about it. Mm hmm. You get a mental message from the beholder. Pissed himself. <laughs> That's what that smell was. Out of what? I've seen the miniatures. There's no export hole. No, he said Fivin did. Oh. <laughs> I, was, I was just saying, you know, me and Rachel have talked about whether or not a beholder has a butthole. <laughs> the reason that came up is because one of my beholder minis is like they put a butthole on it. It has to have a butthole. I think you sent me the picture of yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> it has to have a butthole. No. But where does it This is freelance. We don't need a reason for that conversation. It's freelance. The no, conversation is just expected. What do you I, mean, how I, does it eat? They don't <laughs> they don't eat. They they They're expend magical, energy. They are magical creatures. They, they don't Magical but creatures it's... don't like to chow down on a cheeseburger every now and then. It's but like, because they have a tongue. But because they are mag yeah, to speak. It mm. doesn't mean they have to eat. Look, I give them teeth. Maybe it eats through the butthole. <laughs> we have discovered that it oh can taste God. things. <laughs> I was just sitting here thinking that well, it doesn't necessarily it doesn't Maybe necessarily it's like a reverse a... owl pellet. Oh, no, I'm thinking it's more like a, it's just a cloaca. It's a it's a jack of all trades. <laughs> oh, a jack of all trades. Gross. <laughs> all right, all right. Disgusting. All right, I am. That's what he calls disgusting. <laughs> I am keeping an eye on this pirate. If he like moves, goes for weapons, starts to mumble something that Kess can generously interpret as a spell, she is stabbing him. Right the in the windpipe. Yes. I want to do uh, an investigation on this book, but I want to not investigate whether or not it scribbles or anything. I want to try to investigate if I can de- if I can detect what level of forgery this is. Right? Like how much effort was put into the forgery. All right. As a person who forges, you know. All right. Adrian, give me, I'm sorry, Kess, give me a con save. Con save? Okay. Well, actually, no, more of a will save. A will save. A little splash of con with a dash of... A wisdom save? Yes. Sorry, three fives. Came sorry, I, I was thinking four. I'm like, whoa. Okay. Uh, Let me double check. She should have like a 20 in wisdom, though. It is a 20. I rolled low. Ooh. I don't have DD bound up. I can't see what you're old. Oh, if it's, oh, yeah. if it's a charm, though, I get to roll with advantage. Who are you asking for their role? 
her. Okay. Um, not really a charm, more of a compulsion. Is that not a charm? Ah, uh, roll the advantage. Okay. She's an elf, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. She can't be charmed or compulsion, right? No, I get no. advantage against oh. saves against being charmed. Uh, second roll was worse, so it's a twenty. She can't be put to sleep, is what it is. Right. I can't magically be put to sleep. Yeah. And she doesn't normally sleep, yeah. so she's yes. Good. You feel something drawing you from inside the vault. But you're able to control and not seek it, but you feel like something's calling you from inside the vault. I keep my eyes on uh, Rain's uncle, but I kind of call back and I'm like, what's going on back there? What do you mean? Devin's like, I don't know. Just I'm handing him the book. Okay. It's okay. Stay over there. Problem? You didn't... <sighs> I don't know. Just let's get this done. You're you're good there, Catch. Just just keep him there. Uh investigation no, is twenty four. Oh god. No, you see Fivin's acting kinda odd in that sense. Pass knows that Fivin's acting odd. Mm-hmm. Fivin, he normally doesn't tell you to stay away. Fivin, we don't have time for any kind of weirdness. It's just, it's a book. And he hands it to the professional. Investigation check 25. All right. I'm, ta I'm taking the 10. No, you're fine. Um, As you go through the book, you're looking through it. It's a decent level of... Decent level of hold on. Rachel killing that rhino <laughs> one bite at a time. All right. So as you're going through it, the oh god, what's the word I'm looking for? The um fake's not the word. It's forgery. Forgery. The forgery is good. Um, not perfect. Um the the scribbles do look or they're not the scribbles, but the forgery does look magical enough to be an ancient language, right? but one that doesn't make sense because you've seen this same language in some of Strahd's journals. You've seen it in other magical books in your library. Mm -hmm. um, you know Victor's not this good, but a, somebody that was trained by someone possibly professional but not a professional raised all her life in an organization like your own hmm. would have a hand at something like this. I think Relena faked it. The handwriting looks a lot similar. The strokes to like your way, Relena. Mm -hmm. Like the way we would be taught to fake it. Mm -hmm. As you inspect the book more, it's looking real familiar close to one Victor has in the library and on the ship. Interesting. All right. Well, I'm not going to disclose any of that information. I will say, um, is, is there any writing that's not uh, scribbles or is it all about of... the first third to half of the book is actually looks legit. Hmm. But the part where, um, where you know, you would assume the part of the prophecy or part of what explains things and it gets deeper into the old magic is the part where it switches, and that's where you can mostly tell Fivin's more upset about knowing that they've, you know, he got he brought it here. He's been trying to, you know, he's left it to them to decipher. Yet, reason they couldn't decipher past a certain point is because. All of a sudden, it changed. It wasn't what it was should have been. It, the code broke. The code shifted. Okay. Well, then my suspicion is that we probably have the original book already in the library. But I don't want to mention that. So I'm going to kind of lackadaisically toss it. I'm like, yeah, that's a fake. Seems like the forgery is of a decent quality, though. I might be able to hunt it down for a price. You said that to Fivin? 
Yeah, I'm gonna toss him back the fake. A price? You can't put a price on this. You can if you want to see it again. Yeah, Fibbin, you can definitely put a price on a book. Cass, not you. You helped me get this. You lost it. He throws the fake one. I'd probably keep my hands on that. He picks up and puts it on the pedestal. It's important to make it look like everything's in place. That way you don't have, uh, you know, other people looking for it. Make this, the job harder for me. Adri, give me another one. Another wisdom. Adri? I'm sorry, Kes. Okay. Oh, snap some. <laughs> Edit. Uh, not 20, so it's going to be a 31. You're still feeling it and it's getting stronger. On a nat 20? It could be increasing in power. Maybe you're failing in the opposite direction. Maybe success means you are pulled towards it. Um, Cass kind of like just kind of shifts her weight. Um, She doesn't want to look back at the vault because she's trying to keep an eye on this pirate, but she's like probably her body language kind of conveys that she's not feeling good about this what are you guys doing back there are we almost done rain yeah can you take over the guard duty for uh for uncle uh, yeah I, I i can i can handle that Cass, you doing all right i just is there a wait for rain to kind of come over uh, before I step back and look back at the vault. Is there something else in there? Like... Hey, do you look in the vault deeper? Who? Uh, you. Yeah, I'll look in there. Alright. You see four pedestals around the outside of it. The book was in the center. There's an amulet on one pedestal, a wicked looking crown on another pedestal, a wand, and then you see an interesting sword. You see a sword with the uh, family crest of Leiden on it. Or Leiden. I can't pronounce the name right, right now. Rachel, what's the correct pronunciation of that name? Lydon. Lydon. You said pronunciation. That's so good. <laughs> Sorry. That's perfect. That's excellent <laughs> on a, a whole nother level. <laughs> Don't ask me to say the L word. <laughs> <laughs> I am very interested now that I am capable of making that connection. I'm going to walk up to the sword and pick it up and walk out and without showing it uh, like off to everyone. I'm just going to point to um, Fivin. I want this. He looks at it and he gets scared and he looks at Kess immediately. You know what's you going on here. Don't. You can't let her. Don't, you better come clean with me, you little shit. What's going on? I'm going on? to unsheath the sword. And I'm going to point it at him. Tell me everything you know right now. I I can't. I'm going to point it against his chest. What now. Are you, what are you two doing? I'm going to Give use the... uh, intimidation. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take a 10. So 15. Oh. Damn, I was wanting like bigger. Oh, um, I can roll lucky. I'll lucky it. Oh God, fuck me now. <clears throat> no, fifteen. All right. He... If we want to take a long rest, I could intimidate the shit out of him. <laughs> Did you he's, include he's... your luck stone? 
I did. Okay. He he's looking at the sword. He looks at her, he looks back at you. I was under the orders to keep it away from her. From who? I'm going to poke. I'm going to do one HP of damage. <laughs> from her. And he points at her. The sword's been here a long time. It was at the school before me. But once I recognized it, I had a report to my master who's what sword it was and who it was. I'm going to pull it back. As a friend of the family, I don't really find this very funny. I don't find this... Look. This is... Unacceptable. To keep this... You you recognize it as a family moon blade passed down by elf to elf in generations. It only follows the bloodline of the Lyodans. I'm going to take it and I'm going to... And the to... calling... And what you do know of Moonblades is it's calling her because it's chosen her as the next wielder. Oh my god, my sword. I'm going to, to take the blade and I'm going to flip it in my hand and sh like sheath it. And I'm going to look at Adri or uh, Cass. <laughs> I'm like, you think this is what might have drawn you? And I'm going to hold it up like a cross, like pointed right at her face. <laughs> Reverse vampire cross. Does she get those big anime eyes just like, ah? <laughs> <laughs> Do I feel anything, David? Oh, yeah. that That is what you feel pulled to. Uh, Kes reaches out for the, the sword. I'm going to I'm going to hold the sheath and she can go ahead and pull the blade out if she wants. Figure that'd be more potent. I will. All right. Your system's shocked <gasps> entirely top to bottom. Adri wakes up <gasps> and the memories of Kes come flooding through Adri completely and utterly. Um the two become one. Memories of old and old and past old and current are all merging at once completely. She understands Kess. She understands who Kess was. She keeps all the memories of Kess. Mm -hmm. The good and the bad. Oh no. As she realizes what's gone on in the last 10 years. Uh... She realizes she ran her father away a number of times. <gasps> oh no. She ran. She's punched children. She's slaughtered monsters. <laughs> she's covered in blood. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. She's used Elven battle cries outside of battle. A lot. Constantly. A lot. Yeah. <laughs> all the time. Um, okay. She tried to kill her friend's father as well. She did. She did try to do that. But that's because her friend also wanted to kill her father. So. Um, there's she realizes of... <laughs> she missed seeing Victor. Uh, there's a she's gonna like unsheath the sword like kind of holding it up and there's like this I don't know she like kind of looks at it uh, she remembers everything and then she'll look like from the sword past it to Kavir and just well, welcome back you dewy eyes moon <laughs> immediately <laughs> Her eyes fill with tears, and she's gonna like go to hug Kavir, and she's just immediately going to start crying. I'm gonna hold my arms up. I thought I thought you were dead. <laughs> Dead's more like a state of mind, really. She is younger than you remember him. <laughs> <laughs> she is crying. She is hugging him very tightly. She is like trying to talk. As she's crying, she's sort of like hiccuping the, the, the words. She's like, I thought you you turned into dust and I was going to I was going to do a resurrection. But then the mist took me here and then I forgot that I was me. I look Oh, no, at, no. We, I, I look at Vincent. And I'm like, we might want to step back because I don't know what the hell's going on here. <laughs> but this is weird. I'm going to look at him like got a sword. The beholders on the, the beholder on the side. 
I love this shit. <laughs> like two this of his the... eye stalks are like wiping the yeah. <laughs> like, like, corner. I haven't had this kind of trauma in years. Another eye stalk's holding a little bucket of popcorn. <sighs> I can't eat this, but <laughs> I can't eat this because I don't have a butthole. I'll just I'll just plop one in at a time up the butt chute. I call it my food luge. <laughs> Welcome back. Thank you. I back. You mean how did, how did you get younger? I aged in reverse, baby. <laughs> Yes, Rain, you notice the change in her voice. I, I can't help but notice the <laughs> yes, the is she is she her again? Is that what this the, the sword and the thing? What the, what is going on here? That's Adri. Let oh. me introduce you. Oh well no, Rain? I know what I we Adri. met. Captain Rain. I yeah, you you gave me my dad a, a ride. Yes. I Many years ago. Dad. I punched my dad into a to, to be fair i almost had to punch your dad too but your dad tried <laughs> to punch me once <laughs> oh too soon Tongue punch? <laughs> no uh to fight which dad tried to punch you there Both has been multiple <laughs> yeah so so wait the sword was the key to unlocking her whatever may i I'm gonna I'm gonna take the sword, I'm gonna lean it down across my hand and be like this symbol right here. Yeah. Family symbol. It's an elven moon blade. Okay. You know it looked, it looked well, it I could I I certainly recognize the elven, but I moon blade, no, that's that's new to me. Wait, well, why was it, it here? It chooses its wielder. Okay. And it chose well. It's the okay. one I would have chose. Sure. But why was it here? Well, family has a history of uh, dealing with here. Warlock? One of her ancestors ended up in Ravenloft years ago when the blade got trapped with them here. Huh. In the Dreadrealms. Ozalan knew or had a suspicion that the blade being here and her being the only bloodline might trigger. So... We had to keep the blade away from her and the other. Why? What other? I I'm sorry, Kes. I, I couldn't. You, you know Aslan's my patron. Aslan? I, I, the Lich. The Dreadlord. The Dreadlord. Yeah. Isn't well, he's he not gone? Around power is still there but yeah he's he's gone we we all had a mission well your mission's done so is my friend bummer me you and should... Fivin are not friends just to <laughs> clarify <laughs> me and him are not cool and we're not gonna be cool He's not allowed on the boat. He's <laughs> fucking lucky he's allowed to walk. <laughs> you shouldn't have kept this from me. Wasn't the only one. Who else? Let me go back to your list of friends. <laughs> <laughs> All of them. <laughs> Bunch of assholes, you ask me. Uh, hold on. Got to get back all to the beginning. Ah, there we go. Damocos. Damocos, no. But he was part of the... He part served of... the Kagrat. You knew that. We all had our orders. Well, I didn't think... I didn't think I was a part of that. Originally, but then you actually turned out to be pretty pretty fun to have around. Pretty good. Got to 
be friends with you. I don't buy it. I'll stab him. <laughs> well, that was a quick roll reversal. I... Oh, no. Kavir's angry. That was his oh, best no, no. friend. I, I, I totally <laughs> sense that he's angry, but I had just gotten so used to I... Kestrel being the stabby one. And... <laughs> what do you stab him with, Kavir? I'm not going to stab him. I'm just throwing oh. him. Okay. Damn, I just pulled up a card. I was, gonna, I was ready to get some HP going. <laughs> Adrian's going through a lot of emotions right now because she remembers as Kess being friends with Fivin, so... There's this weird feeling of like my friend betrayed me, and also this person has kept me from knowing who I am. <laughs> you said you said the other. Is that Ludo? He gets real like the color in his skin fades as he backs up and he actually hides behind Kavir from you. Insight. Insight. I, I'm going to turn and face him like wrong. And I'm going to grab him <laughs> by his cloak. Um, 23. How, how much of how much are you still Kess in there? I and remember how much are you, Adri. I remember being Kess. So are we talking like I'm going to run you through or like Kess or like Mercy like Adri? You... Only one way to find out. You need to tell me who the other is. I'm going to uh, disengage and then oh. take a step around behind him so that I'm directly behind him. I think I pronounced the Lich's name wrong. Hold on. It's bugging me since I said it because Aslan doesn't sound right. I think it's Azrael or As. No, it's Aslan. Okay, Aslan. Okay. It's actually, according to the Ravenloft novel, that's not actually his name. It's his original language for like Wizard King. But when he came to Darkon, mm. the people couldn't pronounce that, and they interpreted it as Aslan, so that's what they call him. But that's not his actual name. His actual name is Greg. <laughs> Damn it, Greg. <laughs> not Greg. Uh, uh, I'm going to disengage, step around behind him, grab him by the back of his shirt, and then use like this professional technique that they use where they step on the back of your knee. He swallows heavy. Uh, Aslan knew your father was Strahd's spy and he knew, and he wanted to compromise him so he he didn't know about you until after he did it and to compromise him there was only one other person besides you that would compromise Ludo who? Thrasta I'm going to summon the shadow blade in my hand in the form of a hooked dagger and I'm going to put it against his head and hold his hair She's alive here under the memory curse. He brought her back. Where? Da Damocles has her. I'm not sure where he hit Damocles has her, but Damocles has her. He 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 was keeping his orders were to keep her far away. I'm gonna lean real close to his ear so only me and him can hear. You're going to tell me everything that you know about this. Thanks for listening to Freelance Heroism. We really appreciate you coming in and listening. We also really appreciate all the people who support our Patreon. By supporting the Patreon, uh, you're going to get behind the scene uncut clips that uh, you'll get to see sort of like maybe the tissue behind some of the edited, cleaned up content. And uh, you'll get that whenever we have a big block of it to drop, uh, as well as any updates or any information behind the scenes stuff uh, that we think the Patreons would like to know. So if you'd like to support our Patreon and help us continue making the high quality, high octane podcast that you've come to expect, go ahead to uh, patreon.com forward slash freelance underscore heroism. Thank you. And as usual, the invoice is in the mail.
Oh. Oh, okay. Burp girl. I hiccuped. I didn't burp. She's a bu- 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 burp girl. I hiccuped. It's almost a vomit. Ew, no. Burp. Aggressively, she throws <laughs> up hard.